Dayon Rappler Typhoon Labuyo, international name Uter, intensifies as it moves out of the Philippines. The Philippine national basketball team earns a spot in the 2014 FIBA World Cup in Spain. And the Philippines and the United States begin talks on a new basis agreement. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Typhoon Labuyo, international name Uter, gains strength as it moves out of the Philippine area of responsibility. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says the typhoons located 230 kilometers northwest of Baguio City or 200 kilometers west of Sinait, Ilocos Sur. The eye of the typhoon is now over the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea. Storm signal number two is up over Nueva Vizcaya, Ifugao, Mountain Province, Ilocos Sur, Benguet, La Union, and Pangasinan. Signal number one is up over Abra, Kalinga, Apayao, Isabela, Aurora, Quirino, Nueva Ecija, Tarlac, Ilocos Norte, Pampanga, Bataan, and Zambales. One person died and at least 23 are missing as a typhoon sweeps across northern Luzon. The Philippine national basketball team is going to Spain to compete in the 2014 FIBA World Cup and they did it with drama. It has been 35 years since the Philippines competed in the World Basketball Championships. Gilas Pilipinas secured a spot in the FIBA World Cup after defeating longtime tormentor South Korea in the semifinals. They played without naturalized center Marcus Doubted, who suffered a knee injury in the second round game against Qatar. The Philippines has a history of being beaten by the Koreans in basketball. Gilas head coach Chot Reyes says the team's main goal is to make the Philippines proud. He dedicates the win to former coaches and players of the national team. He says, quote, this was for Jong, for Olsen, for Raiko, for all the tough times against Korea. Reyes is referring to 2002 national team head coach Jong Wichiko, former player Olsen Rosella, and 2011 Gilas head coach Raiko Toroman, who all suffered heartbreaking losses to Seoul. In the championship round, Gilas faced Iran, led by the 7 feet 2 inches tall Hamed Hadadi. Gilas trailed by only one point at halftime, but was overwhelmed by the inside presence of Hadadi in the second half. Iran would go on to win the FIBA Asia title 85 to 71. Jason Castro, the Philippines' second leading scorer, is named to the mythical five. He earns the distinction of being the best point guard in Asia. Reyes admits they were overmatched from the start, but they found ways to win because they did not want to disappoint the crowd. Gila's team captain Jimmy Alapag assures treasures the experience. He says, quote, it's always an honor to represent our country. I couldn't be prouder to be Filipino. Oil company Petron apologizes for the Friday oil spill in Manila Bay after the Philippine Coast Guard confirms it was caused by a leaking submerged pipeline owned by Petron. In a statement, Petron President Lubin Nepomuceno says, We sincerely apologize and assure all the communities affected that we will strive to resolve the situation at the soonest possible time. Because of the leak, 500,000 liters of diesel oil spread to coastal villages in the towns of Rosario, Tansa, and Naik in Cavite. It affected thousands of fishermen who depend on the sea for a living. The Philippines and the United States will start negotiations on an agreement that grants the U.S. access to Philippine bases. What does this mean for the Philippines? Carmela Fonbuena reports. President Benito Aquino III has given us permission to commence consultations and negotiations regarding an agreement that will provide a framework for us for U.S. increased rotational presence in the Philippines. The Philippines and the U.S. begin formal negotiations on a new basis agreement. It will give the U.S. wider access to Philippine military bases and increase the presence of U.S. troops in the Philippines. It aims to boost the country's maritime security amid tensions in the South China Sea. The deterrence can be enhanced even before modernization. That maritime security and maritime domain awareness will be given a boost even before we have ships and aircraft that we need. That even before we have the advanced hardware we wish for, 
we will know how to operate and maintain them. The Philippine panel members are Foreign Affairs Assistant Secretary Carlos Soreta, Defense Undersecretary Pio Lorenzo Batino, Defense Assistant Secretary Raymond Jose Quilop, and Justice Undersecretary Francisco Baraan. The U.S. panel is led by senior military diplomat Eric John. There used to be tens of thousands of U.S. troops in the Philippines before the Senate junked the RP-U.S. Basis Treaty in 1991. The Visiting Forces Agreement opened the doors once again on the condition that their stay is temporary. The Philippine panel struggles to explain how the new agreement is going to change existing arrangements under the VFA. Will the Americans bring in, for example, fighter aircrafts or surveillance planes? They say it's a possibility. One of the possible benefits for the Philippine government, uh, for DND and AFP particular, particularly, is the uh, uh, possibility of this temporarily deployed equipment to be used by the Philippine government for key mission areas such as maritime security, maritime domain awareness, and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. Congress has been notified about the talks, but the new deal is meant to be an executive agreement that will not require the approval of the Philippine Senate. The Philippine panel dismisses constitutional and legal questions raised against expanding U.S. access on Philippine military bases. But while members guarantee they will be transparent, they can only give buzzwords for now. What they mean by high-impact and high-value exercises and modalities for increased rotational presence remain to be seen. Carmela Fonbuena, Rappler, Camp Aguinaldo. More bombings hit Cotabato, adding to the series of attacks in various parts of Mindanao the past two weeks. On Monday, an explosion hits the Kabaka North Cotabato office of the Commission on Elections, hours after police defuse a powerful homemade bomb outside the Cotabato City Hall. On Saturday, Malacanang says it launched investigations to, quote, determine and punish people or groups behind the bombings. In a radio interview, Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Abigail Voltes says, if you notice these blasts, they have random targets targets. It's not about religion, it's not about your affiliation, but it's being done randomly. The operations are ongoing. Monday's incidents add to earlier attacks the past two weeks. On July 26, a Cagayan de Oro explosion killed eight and injured 46 others. Another deadly blast on August 5 killed eight in Cotabato. On Wednesday, three more bombings occurred, two in Maguindanao and one in North Cotabato. A suspected New People's Army member who led an ambush in April on then Gingoog City Mayor Ruthie Gingona is arrested Sunday. Reynaldo Agcop Ragundaya is wanted for the April 20th ambush, which left the 70-year-old Gingona injured and two of her and killed two of her aides. Gingona is the wife of former Vice President Jofiso Gingona Jr. and mother of Senator T.G. Gingona. The government condemned the attack. The NPA apologized for hurting Gingona, claiming they, it was acting in self-defense. Three properties in California worth up to $9.5 million or 415.1 million pesos are linked to the family of alleged pork barrel queen Janet Lim Napoles. Based on the California Secretary of State website, there are two businesses owned by Reynald Louis Lim, Napoles' brother, and her alleged partner in the multi-million pork barrel scam. Napolis' cousin, whistleblower Ben Herloy, says the U.S. properties were bought from 2006 to 2007, about three years from the time the scheme started. The years match the testimony of a source who previously told Rappler the lifestyle of Napolis' daughter got more and more lavish after 2005, based on her posts on social media networks. The site's records show Lim as the listed owner of Western Investment Corporation and Western Ventures Management Incorporated, but tax certificates for both companies also list Napolis' children, James and Joe Christine Napolis, as owners. The two companies have three different properties attached to their names. One, Anaheim property, sold September 2006 for $7 million. Its assessed value today is $7.2 million or 313.9 million pesos. Covina Property sold June 2007 for $1.2 million. Its assessed value today is $1.3 million or 55.7 million pesos. Irvine Property sold July 2007 for $1.4 million. Its assessed value today is $1.04 million or 45.5 million pesos. The assessed value of their properties combined stands at $9.5 million or 415.1 million pesos. 
This amount excludes the estimated 80 million peso Ritz-Carlton LA apartment owned by Janet's youngest daughter, Jean. Lim and Apollos are under investigation for allegedly pocketing pork barrel money obtained from politicians for ghost projects. Well, let's now look at Rappers Wrap for today. A list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, Asiana Airlines offers $10,000 initial compensation payment to all surviving passengers on board the plane that crash landed last month in San Francisco. The crash killed three people and left 180 injured. Asiana offers the cash to help the 288 surviving passengers meet urgent medical expenses before final compensation amounts are decided and announced later. At number 9, online tech magazine All Things D reports Apple will unveil its next iPhone at a special event on September 10. Reported leaks of new plastic iPhone cases spread online, with a secretive company neither confirming nor denying a possible mass market iPhone. There's speculation Apple will use the event to push a cheaper version of the iPhone or devices with larger screens. The company will most probably release its new iOS 7 and OS Mavericks operating systems. And at number 10, Glee star Leia Michelle wins the Choice TV Comedy Actress Award at Sunday night's Teen Choice Awards. In her acceptance speech, the actress tears up and dedicates the award to her boyfriend, Corey Monteith, who died from a fatal overdose of heroin and alcohol on July 13th. Michelle and the Glee cast and crew gathered July 26th for a private memorial for Monteith. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. NBA star Kobe Bryant makes a return trip to the Philippines for the sixth time in an event called Hashtag Walang Iwanan, arranged by Lenovo Mobile. Fans get the chance to ask the five-time NBA champion some questions. Kobe was supposed to be at the Mall of Asia Arena 10 a.m., but his flight is delayed because of Typhoon Labuyo. During the press conference, Kobe talks about his goals before he can retire. Okay, rank these three in order of importance. Winning a sixth ring, breaking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's scoring record, or getting a record 12th NBA, All-NBA First Team accolade? I would say uh, getting the sixth championship is number one. And then I would say getting the sixth championship is number two. And then getting the sixth championship is number three. Kobe talks about social media. Do it. The most important thing about social media is transparency. You know, so you have to be, you have to, you can't shy away from addressing, addressing tough issues. You can't, you know, shy away from being vulnerable. You know, you, you have to allow the people to see exactly what's going on inside your head and inside your heart. The two-time NBA Most Valuable Player also talks about Philippine yeah, basketball yeah, and gives advice to Gilas Pilipinas. Well, the passion, I think that the passion that they have for the game of basketball is the thing that, you know, drives me the most. I love being around that energy. Well, you just continue to play together. It's not, it's not the strength of an individual in team sports, but it's how well those individuals blend together as a team. And I think when that happens, you have something, you can accomplish something truly special. But you have to be able to do it as a team. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. You click how you feel, and the vote comes down to the mood navigator that's in the middle of the front page that crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top ten stories that have affected our readers the most. These are the stories that have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. If you take a look today, what an interesting day we have. Um, Janet Limnapola still there, um, very red. Napolis Kin owned 400 million peso U.S. properties, 89% angry. How Janet Lim Napolis got away, this is about the military deal, 81% angry. We also have Typhoon Labuyo, 52% afraid today. Strangely enough, the story that's gotten the most number of votes, class suspensions, Monday, August 12. Interesting, 47% annoyed. That Along with this story, in defense of Jean Napolis, 71% annoyed that purple leading to the mood of the day. Today, most people are annoyed. Well, that is Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, August 12, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.